Hi everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, it is a beautiful summer day in Southern Missouri. It's been about a month since we have planted our big garden here for the summer. And so we wanted to take a couple minutes today to give you a full garden tour, not only of this garden, which we planted with you guys, but there are lots of other places that we have things growing that you don't know about yet. And so we wanna take you guys all over to all the different gardens uh, and show you how everything is doing. So we've got a lot of ground to cover, uh, pun intended. <laughs> Let's hop into the garden and start the tour. Well, you guys, what better place to start in the garden but by the tomato plants. Our tomato plants are doing pretty well. They've got a lot of height on them. They are getting nice and bushy. Every single one of our tomato plants here either has a bunch of blossoms on it or a couple uh, little tiny tomatoes on them. We are pleased with how they are doing. Uh, these here in front of me and this first half of this row are all our Jet Star tomatoes. They're our number one type of tomato. It's a slicing tomato. We absolutely love these and they're doing a really great job. At the other end of this row is a sister plant to the Jet Star tomatoes called Jet Setter. Uh, we like to have both of them here. They both do really well. But if there's a chance that one of them's not going to do well for some reason, we can still rely on the other. So that's Jet Star and Jet Setter. But because Kevin likes to snack on tomatoes every time he comes out to the garden in the summer, we have put on each side a cherry tomato plant. So this year on this side, we are doing Gardner's Sweetheart uh, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. They're really cute because they're heart-shaped, which I think is really fun. But the, the Gardner's Sweetheart tomatoes really do well in our area because they are very crack resistant. And because we have temperature fluctuations quite often, and we've got times of lots of rain, not so much rain, even though we kind of control that with drip irrigation, these uh, types of tomatoes really resist cracking. So that's why we're trying those this year. So that is the first row of tomatoes. Let's go to the second row of tomatoes. Our second row of tomatoes are mainly paste tomatoes. Uh, paste tomatoes have a lot less liquid in them, so it's easier to boil down to use for like pasta sauce. Uh, we have two varieties we're growing this year. One is Opalka and the other is Salvaterra Select. And we have some great uh, examples of those right here. Uh, they, are, they produce slower, so they're later to ripen than the Jet Star and the Jet Setter, uh, but they provide a wonderful harvest. Now also at the ends of this row are a type of cherry tomato. And uh, this variety is called Juliet. They are a grape tomato that are also crack resistant. And that's one of the main reasons why we grow them. Now a couple times already we've come out to the tomatoes and we have trimmed up the lower leaves so that none of them are touching or very close to the ground. That's really the only type of pruning that we do. We don't, uh, we don't take off any of the suckers. We leave them there. Uh, we just prefer to do that. We find that we have a bigger yield than taking off the suckers. We've also gone through the tomatoes twice and supported them to these trellises with these tomato clips. You can see an example of the tomato clips here. It just clips onto the branch and then clips onto the trellis here and just keeps them upright. Throughout the summer we'll continue as they get bigger and bigger and kind of on the floppy side. We'll continue to secure them to our trellises to keep them safe. The next row are the peppers, and I absolutely love growing peppers. They're actually the favorite thing for me to grow in the garden. Kevin likes the tomatoes the most, I like the peppers the most, so we do one full row, a 50-foot row of peppers. We like a lot of bell peppers, and so that's really the most of what we plant here. Uh, I think I planted uh, 10 emerald giant bell pepper plants. But there were two that we are trying that are new to us this year. We went to a nursery nearby that's owned uh, by an Amish family and I noticed some purple beauty bell peppers. So I did plant two of them. And then we also heard from a friend of ours that the Big Bertha 
bell pepper is really good. So we also decided to plant two Big Bertha. So we're really excited to see what happens with them. You never know, we may end up completely switching. Next up in the peppers are the nada peños, which are jalapenos that just aren't hot. We absolutely love them. So we did plant several of the nada peño plants. One of my favorite peppers is a red roasting pepper. I'll grow it every year called Adjvarsky. And so we've got several Adjvarsky plants here. You can see that I haven't quite gotten to uh, weeding every single one of these little holes here, but I'll get to it. Then comes the spicy peppers. Now we didn't overdo it this year. We have just a few of the Craig's Grande Jalapeno and it looks like Kevin is out of Tabasco sauce that I made for him several years ago. So we planted some Tabasco peppers. So this year I will be refilling the cabinets and the cupboards with jars of Tabasco sauce. These are really fun to grow. I've grown them once before and the plants get really big, put on a ton of peppers, and they stay green for a long time. And then right at the end of the season, it's almost like Christmas, like Christmas lights on your Christmas tree. All of a sudden, they're just filled with almost these red, what looks like red lights, just all these red peppers all over the place. I'm excited to show you guys that. Next up is one of my favorite rows in the garden, of course, next to the tomatoes, but my favorite row right here is the okra. I absolutely love okra. Sarah doesn't like okra at all, but my daughter Samantha and I absolutely love it. So we always grow quite a bit of okra. I actually like to dice it, uh, bread it, and freeze it so over the winter I can still have some deep fried okra when I'm hungry for a snack or put it in the air fryer for a healthier option. But let's face it, deep fried is always the best. So these 14 okra plants should give us plenty of okra for all summer and all winter. This year we're growing the Clemson Spineless. Uh, it's actually seed that we saved from last year. They're doing really well. Uh, we've tried a lot of different varieties of okra over the years, but the Clemson Spineless just always do the best. We think they have a great flavor, so that's just what we're sticking with from here on out. We're doing two types of cucumbers this year. Uh, this first half here is Chicago Pickling Cucumbers, which are a little bit smaller cucumber, perfect for pickling, as the name implies. And then on the other end is the Market More Cucumber. That's a cucumber that we've actually grown many times in the past. We absolutely love. It's a great cucumber for either uh, fresh eating, like in salads, or just cut up with some salt on it is the way I like it. Uh, great for making refrigerator pickles. But also if you pick them on the smaller side, they are good for pickling as well. Uh, so we absolutely love them. Uh, we tried hard not to go overboard with cucumbers this year. Uh, I remember a couple of years ago, we actually ended up with so many cucumbers and we were taking so many of them to feed to our pigs that by the end of the season, even the pigs didn't want any more cucumbers. We'd take them and we'd dump them in the pig pen and they'd just kind of look at them and walk away. That's when you know you have too much of something. When a pig turns its nose up at it, uh, you know you've given them too many. So this year we're doing a smaller, only half a row here. I think this will be a manageable amount uh, for us to be able to eat and probably for the pigs to have some too. This next row is something completely new to us this year. It's a new type of green bean that we're trying. Uh, this is called Dolico Ochio. Uh, we actually bought a bunch of this seed uh, several years ago at Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. Uh, they used to, before the COVID days, once a year have a big auction where they would sell any seeds that you know didn't sell in the catalog or seeds that they didn't need. They would sell those once a year at an auction right at their facility. We were able to buy a bunch of seed that year. We've actually had these in the house for several years now. Uh, so we planted them this year just to see what they would be like. They're supposed to be a little bit longer green bean and they're a half runner bean, which means that they should climb probably about five feet. So probably about to the top of this fence. So normally we do bush green beans. We thought we'd give these a try this year and see how it will be trying to pick green beans standing up instead of just all the way on the ground. So we're gonna give these a try and see how we like them. If they do well, we will probably save a bunch of our own seed for, for you know future years uh, because the seed that we bought was old. Uh, honestly though, I'm impressed with the germination. We had to replant just a couple, but for the most part, they're doing really well. They're just starting now to get to the point where they're gonna start climbing. Uh, so I'm excited to see how, how tall they actually get. 
So this row is contender green beans. Contender is the variety that we grow pretty much every single year. These are a bush bean, so they'll stay pretty low to the ground, but they are very prolific. Now this 150 foot row will give us plenty of green beans for all the fresh eating that we need for the summer, plus enough to can to get us through to the next year. You can see that they're actually starting to blossom a little bit already. Uh, Green beans are typically one of the very first things that we start picking out of the garden. And once they start producing, man, they will produce so fast. We'll have to be out here probably every other day picking until they're all done. So we're excited about that. Again, these are the contender green beans, and this is something that will be in our garden pretty much every year. This row right here is partially open yet. Uh, it's two thirds of this row here. We want to plant zucchini and lemon squash, but in the past, if we've planted them early in the summer or in the spring, they just completely get killed out by squash bugs. Last year, we did an experiment in just a couple of our buckets. We planted zucchini late, uh, I think like in July. They completely missed the whole squash bug season. So that's why we're just keeping this as a placeholder and we'll plant them uh, probably in July. At the other end here are our tomatillos. This year we're planting two varieties of tomatillos. One is the verde or green and the other is purple. I have found out that if you plant two different varieties of tomatillos they will pollinate each other better and then you'll get more fruit. Last year we did okay, probably marginal in the uh, tomatillo department. I was able to make a little bit of salsa verde, but not a whole lot. And I'd like to be able to um, make a lot of salsa verde. I'd like to mix it with my chicken, like shredded chicken and have uh, like green shredded chicken tacos and stuff like that. And just as a salsa. So we're trying them again this year and we have dedicated one third of a row here. Next up are the Canada Crookneck squash. This is a winter squash, kind of like a butternut squash. Tastes similar, uh, but we actually like the flavor of the Canada Crookneck squash a lot better than butternut. Uh, it is very, very sweet and flavorful. We tried these last year for the first time because they are uh, resistant to the squash bugs and they really did so well last year, even while there were squash bugs around other parts of the garden. Even if the squash bugs were on these plants, they still did well. We ended up with like 90 or 95 of the squash from these plants. This year we've planted another 50 foot row just like last year. You know, yesterday I was out here tying up some of these plants because they're starting to, you know, run. Oh, here's a squash bug. Yesterday I was out here tying up plants and I swear that this plant has grown 18 inches in the last 24 hours. So this is the time of year that I'm just trying to train these guys up through the trellis as much as I can and while I still have time. The last two rows of this garden are watermelons. Uh, we're doing two different kinds this year. Uh, one that we grow pretty much every year, and that is the strawberry watermelons. Uh, they are my absolute favorite because they're so good tasting. They're a big watermelon. I think last year the biggest one we grew was around 30 pounds, uh, but they have a lot of seeds, which is kind of one downside to them. Uh, but the, fl the flavor is amazing. So if you don't mind seeds, the strawberry watermelon is definitely the way to go. The second variety that we're trying for the very first time this year is called Sweet Dakota Rose. It's just a little bit smaller of a watermelon, still an heirloom so we can save seeds, but they're supposed to have a lot less seeds. We purposely wanted to grow a variety this year that had less seeds because we want to try putting some of them through our freeze dryer. So we wanted a variety that we could easily take the seeds out of and then freeze dry. So that's why we're trying this new variety. And who knows, maybe we'll end up liking it even better and next year we'll do the whole row in those. So we planted this row here. There are just a few that didn't come up that we've replanted. And then over here in the back of the garden, we've planted an entire second row of these same varieties. Now uh, we did that so that we'd have a longer harvest season. Uh, this first row should produce maybe about three or four weeks prior to the second row. And we're excited about that so that we can have a longer season and so I don't gain quite as much weight trying to eat, you know, 50 or 60 watermelons in a matter of a month. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to extend that out just a little bit. So that's it for this garden, what we call our main garden. 
let's take a walk over by our greenhouse and we'll show you what's going over there. Now you guys haven't seen this raised bed garden since last year. We planted potatoes in this garden last year, but this year we decided to put in our onions, which is this part of the garden. And then I know that I told you that we weren't gonna plant zucchini and those lemon squash in the big garden because of squash bugs, but I had this portion of this garden open with nothing to plant and I just couldn't resist myself. So we did plant some zucchini squash and some lemon squash right here. We'll see, we'll see how they do against the squash bugs. Now behind me and actually in several different areas around this greenhouse, we have lots and lots of buckets of plants and most of them are herbs. I did do kind of a, a bucket by bucket video on herbs a couple weeks ago. If I did it again, we would be here for all day. <laughs> so if you want to know what herbs were growing in the buckets this year, make sure that you check out that video. But instead, let's go into the greenhouse so we can show you how the things in there are doing. Well, just a couple weeks ago, we showed you guys that we planted our sweet potatoes here in our big raised bed that's inside of our greenhouse. Over the winter, we grow a lot of lettuces and greens and things like that in this raised bed. But typically over the summer, it usually sits empty because it gets so warm in here. We decided this year because the sweet potatoes really like warm weather and we've had such a hard time with sweet potatoes growing them in our big garden because the ground gets so hard. We thought this might be the perfect location for the sweet potatoes. So we put all of our slips in here, I, I think about three weeks ago. They were actually a little bit past their prime already before we put them in, but the good thing is we've only lost two or three of them since we actually put them in the ground and the rest of them are actually starting to get some new growth, which is very encouraging. That means that they're starting to grow underground and they're starting to get some new leaves on top of the ground. And I think that's a very good sign. The fact that they made it for the, through these first few weeks gives me hope that they're going to do really well for the rest of the summer. We've also installed some drip tape irrigation in this bed so that we can keep this watered. Uh, one thing about these raised beds is that you do really want to make sure you water deep and all the way down to you know the bottom of the raised bed so uh, by adding the drip irrigation we can just turn this on on a timer let it run for several hours and everything gets a good soak we've also added a fan in this greenhouse um, in the past we really haven't had a fan in here because we've basically used this mostly in the winter and we actually want to hold in as much of the heat as we can over the summer though, I've installed a fan, just kind of a, a regular fan that you buy at the store, but just enough to keep the air moving. And it does seem to keep some of that hot air moving out of the greenhouse. And uh, it really seems to be making a big difference. So these are our sweet potatoes. We're excited to see what kind of harvest we get. Uh, sweet potatoes, we won't harvest until pretty much in the fall. Well, we are standing in another one of our big gardens. This we call our corn garden but it's not just going to grow corn. Last year we grew watermelons here in this big uh, area here, but we just told you that we've got watermelons in our big garden, our main garden. This year we are going to grow something new. We're going to grow four different kinds of pumpkins. We're trying pumpkins this year. We've never really gotten serious about growing pumpkins. So we thought this year we would give it a try because we have some extra space for a sprawling type of plant. Now we just planted the seeds in this garden, so nothing is popping up here. So it's not very exciting yet, but I guarantee you in a month or so, this place is gonna look completely different. Now over the course of the years, we have had subscribers send us seeds and we've gotten a lot of people who have sent us different kinds of pumpkin seeds. So we're excited that three out of the four types of pumpkins that we're gonna be growing here have been sent to us from subscribers. Could be one of you. There's one subscriber who sent us seeds for like record-breakingly huge pumpkins. Two different kinds of seeds, but this year we're going to try one of them that was previously a 775 pound pumpkin. The seeds were sent to us by Jessica McWilliams. Now, we don't expect to have pumpkins that are 775 pounds, but it's really kind of neat that we have seeds from inside of a 775 pound pumpkin. So not all of them need to be that big. So we only planted four, you know, spots for it. So you'll be able to see how it goes when those germinate and they grow. 
The second kind of pumpkins that we're going to be growing are called, well, the person who sent them to us called them Jonestown Better Than the Can pumpkins. Some of our subscribers, Daryl and Cola from Kansas, sent us those seeds, and we're super excited to see what they're going to do. A subscriber named Adele sent us seeds that we planted here for Dominican squash. And then in the back actually are some seeds from Baker Creek that we got several years ago and they are called Solar, S-O-L-O-R. Uh, they're kind of a small pumpkin. We've never tried them before. So we're so excited about all the pumpkins that we have planted and hopefully they're gonna grow and just take up this whole area. So this section of the garden where we don't use the weed fabric, this is where we plant our sweet corn. We just planted sweet corn about three or four days ago. We were a little bit late planting it this year, but luckily here in Missouri, uh, sweet corn has a very long season. So we can actually plant sweet corn all the way up to August and still get a good harvest. So we were late by our own schedule, but we weren't late based on what an okay time to plant is. This year we're doing 50, 15 50 foot rows, the same amount that we did last year. Uh, it actually worked out being, to be a good amount last year. Yes, it's a lot of work because you only have about five days to harvest all of it at the right time, but it's five days of, you know, kind of intense work, but then it's over with. So uh, even though that may seem like a lot, we've really enjoyed having it. We canned a lot of it, we froze a lot of it, and of course we ate a lot of it fresh. Just like last year, we're planting a lot of the peaches and cream sweet corn. Uh, in fact, we're planting 12 rows out of the 15 of the peaches and cream. But these first three rows, we're actually trying a different type of sweet corn this year. Uh, earlier this spring, when we were selling at the farmer's market, one of our subscribers came and gave me some seed for a type of sweet corn called serendipity. Uh, Charles, thank you so much for that sweet corn. Uh, I told you that we would try it in the garden. He told me that we will never grow the peaches and cream again after we grow the serendipity. So I wanted to give it a fair shot. We planted three full rows of it right here at the front. I'm gonna keep a close eye on it. And uh, hey, if it makes us change our mind, that's okay with me. We're always looking for something even better. So that's it. We'll show you guys this as it starts to come up, but we're excited to have a lot of sweet corn again this year. All right, the last garden that we have to take a look at is over by our orchard. So let's go over by the orchard and look at the garden that we've planted there. Well, this is the last garden or kind of mini garden for us that we have to share with you today. Now we're over by our orchard, the one that we just planted this spring inside of this one acre parcel uh, that we set aside for growing. And this is where we have the chicken moat all around, which is a deer fence. Anyway, so we had a bunch, like a, just a hodgepodge of tomato plants and pepper plants left from uh, the farmer's market when we were selling. There weren't enough to go back to the farmer's market just to sell a few more plants, but we also didn't want them to go to waste. We had already given a bunch of them away to friends and family and that kind of thing. So we decided to just plant them. So we uh, tilled up one 50 foot strip of just garden space here, put down a six foot uh, piece of woven weed fabric, put some holes in there and planted tomatoes and peppers along this strip here. This is just kind of our extras garden. We're super excited to see how this is gonna grow because actually on this part of our property, it's the first time we've ever tried gardening. Uh, so this is kind of an experiment to see how the soil does here and just how well we can grow in this area. So that's it guys. That's all of the gardens that we have everything that we have growing and planted. Well, most things. There are a few odds and ends around the homestead we didn't show you guys today, True. but nothing that adds up to a whole lot. So we'd love to know what kinds of new things are you trying at your place this year? Uh, leave those in the comments below. Let us know what part of the country you're in, what you're finding is working for you this year. Uh, and we'd love to be able to share that information with all of our subscribers. You guys, we appreciate you hanging out with us today on the homestead. Uh, remember that the best way that you can help us here is just to share our videos on all your social media. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.